How Tesla's Australian Battery Farms Work Forget about Tesla's cars for a minute, about the self-driving taxis or semis, or whatever else Tesla CEO Elon Musk is currently hyped about on Twitter. This story is about the virtue of being boring, perhaps one of the most underappreciated things in our day and age. This video is not about those luxurious rides that Tesla is mostly associated with, but about a high-performing backup battery farm in South Australia, which has made the news for saving the state tens of millions of dollars. More than two years after winning an electricity bet, Elon Musk's resulting Australian solar and wind farm is an almost total success. The facility powers rural South Australia, whose population density falls between Wyoming and Alaska, the two least dense US states. How can a strictly backup power source that supplies power for just an hour make such a huge difference? And how does the battery facility work within the grid? The California headquartered electric car maker was founded in 2003 and went public in July 2010. Ever since, Tesla has been on top of the trend towards alternative powertrains in the passenger vehicle industry. The company designs, develops, manufactures and markets high-performance technologically advanced electric cars and solar energy generation and energy storage products. Tesla sells more than five fully electric cars, among others, the Model S sedan and the Model X SUV, and the Model 3 sedan, which is among the world's top-selling electric cars. Tesla's CEO, Elon Musk, as of 2021, is the wealthiest guy on the planet, having toppled Amazon founder Jeff Bezos from the top position where he had been since 2017. The South African-born American entrepreneur and tech magnate was born on June 28, 1971, in Pretoria, South Africa. Musk, who founded X.com in 1999, which later became PayPal, SpaceX in 2002, and Tesla Motors in 2003, became a multimillionaire in his late 20s when he sold his startup company, Zip2, to a division of Compaq Computers. In 2017, the Tesla founder joined South Australian Premier Jay Wetherill and the international chief executive of French wind farm developer Neon, Romain Desrousseau, to announce what would turn out to be the world's largest battery installation. The battery tender won by Tesla was a key measure enacted by the South Australian government in response to the statewide blackout in September 2016 together with the construction of a 250-megawatt gas-fired power station. In the grand narrative arc of the South Australia battery farm, the inciting incident was a massive blackout, one of the worst storms to hit South Australia in 50 years, which knocked out 22 high-voltage power pylons. The extent of the outage led officials to shut down what did remain functional, so that unpredictable surges and reroutes wouldn't short the rest of the equipment or start fires. In the aftermath, a conservative politician blamed the push for renewable energy for the extent of the blackouts. When the head of batteries at Tesla said he was sure the company could do better, an Australian billionaire asked if he was serious, and Musk jumped in to promise his team was ready and capable of giving adorable results. Musk reached his goal 40 days early, and the Australian billionaire funded the project as promised. The Neon-owned power reserve is literally a facility full of Tesla power packs that receive and store energy from nearby wind and solar farms. By storing power up to its capacity of 100 megawatts, the battery can absorb brief blips in the grid surrounding it, reducing outages for residents. Just like many of his projects, Elon Musk's battery farm is an undeniable success. The overall effect of the Hornsdale power reserve is twofold. By storing power during low demand times, Hornsdale reduces power wastage and locks in capacity at the lowest cost time. And by releasing power during the highest demand times, the battery reduces the number of edge case blackouts that affect South Australia's grid each summer when extreme weather meets peak consumption. The dedicated battery farm can power 30,000 homes for up to one hour, which relieves the burden on the grid during hot summer days when failure is most likely. Hornsdale and other grid-scale batteries offer a way to tackle the variability of wind and solar power, and South Australia is seen as a global testbed in the transition away from fossil fuels, with the state getting more than half of its power from renewable sources last year, reported Bloomberg. Just 1.7 million people live in South Australia, which is a nice size to consider a test market for technology like this. Rural grids tend to be left behind because the ratio of required hardware and infrastructure is still so high per consumer, much more so than in a big city where the same short length of wiring could power thousands of homes. And building a facility that acts as a battery can help smooth out the natural ebbs and flows that come both from renewable energy technology and from the spread out, failure-prone nature of more rural grid sections. This smoothing has saved South Australians a ton of money, 
already much more than the $50 million cost that Tesla passed on to its Australian investor. The battery facility reduced network costs by about $76 million in 2019. Tesla's PowerPack is a ready-to-stack format comprising individual battery pods packaged together in weather-safe units. It's kind of the commercial counterpart to Tesla's Powerwall, which is a home solution that stores solar power from panels and releases it as needed into the evening. The PowerPack website even includes a cogent testimonial from a Target retail store that confesses this technology offers unique benefits to powering our buildings, most importantly, relieving stress from the electrical grid at peak times. Instead of relying on coal plants or the renewable energy farms themselves, in South Australia that could be solar, wind or hydro, to provide stopgap power during peak times, the Hornsdale facility steps in whenever the power might cut out otherwise. As coal plants get older, the grid loses one of its steady fallbacks. With high summer temperatures, providers sometimes shut down the grid rather than risk fires, and the overall amount of available power is lower in the summer for environmental reasons. It's a recipe for frequent nuisance blackouts each year from December to February. In combination with South Australia's proposed gas station, the battery can help provide stability during extreme events such as a large generator failure or during more common occurrences such as days with low wind output. At this scale, it is unlikely to have a large impact on the average consumer power price in South Australia, but it dramatically helps reduce the incidence of very high prices during tight supply-demand periods. For instance, if a very hot day is forecast during summer, the battery can be fully charged in advance and then discharged to the grid during that hot afternoon when air conditioning use is high, helping to meet demand and keep wholesale prices stable. Tesla's first master plan, dated to 2006, involved making a luxury electric car that focused on the fun rather than the environmental prospects of an electric car, a sports car with the kind of pickup that would make gearheads like Jay Leno excited. Instead of focusing on pure do-goodery, which has a kind of limited market, the electric car would be an aspirational good. Then, after providing that it was possible to make an electric car desirable, there would be cheaper versions and the profit from those that could be used by Tesla to provide solar power. The second master plan, out a decade later, shifted Tesla's focus from cars to energy. The point of all this was, and remains, accelerating the advent of sustainable energy so that we can imagine far into the future, and life is still good, Musk said. He also made an announcement that the company was acquiring Solar City, which was then the largest maker of solar panels in the US. By bringing the two companies together, Musk knew Tesla could create a smoothly integrated and beautiful solar roof with a battery product that just works, empowering the individual as their own utility, and then scale that throughout the world. Solar and wind energy are basically free once you set up the infrastructure to take advantage of them. Over the last two decades, the cost of that infrastructure has come down and batteries are a crucial part of that because you don't get solar energy on a cloudy day or wind energy on a still one. However, a battery allows you to store energy from a sunny day to run your home on a cloudy one. After all, why should your lifestyle be altered by something as annoying as the weather? Why should your lifestyle change at all? Tesla and Musk asked the questions and then answered them in the best possible way. Do you think this is a good idea? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Oh, and turn on post notifications.